Hello and welcome to Something Wicked Entertainment's Alfred Hitchcock Tribute Weekend. <laughs> I'm your host, Kevin L. Powers, um, and I'll be here introducing the films that are happening this weekend. Um, we have a, a, a huge collection of films that were directed by the uh, um, the, the immortal and the uh, infamous Alfred Hitchcock. Um, we're not screening any of his later films in his career, but we're screening a lot of his uh, older films, which are available on YouTube and other streaming devices for free. Uh, so if you like these films, you can always find them there. So just to give you a little information about what we do here at Something Wicked Entertainment, we like to highlight certain filmmakers, uh, actors, directors, writers, so what, um, for a special weekend of their films in order to allow younger viewers and newer audiences to uh, watch these films and then uh, learn to appreciate some of the films that came before, mostly to keep the legacy of these great uh, film talents alive and continuing uh, for, uh, for future generations. This time we are doing Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, some of the other ones we've done in the past have been Barbara Steele, Bella Lugosi, Boris Karloff, Edward D. Wood Jr. And we'll continue to do these as this is a part of our uh, Something Wicked Entertainment programming of free events for people to just watch and screen online. Um, these videos will also be available on uh, our various social media sites if you miss it out this weekend. But the main goal is to allow newer audiences to uh, watch some of these amazing films that they may have missed. Uh, one of the reasons being is they're in black and white, and sometimes we've even done some uh, silent films. So uh, the film we have next is Alfred Hitchcock's The 39 Steps from 1935. It's one of my favorite films, and it's a very famous film, and it's been made into a stage play, it's been remade, so on and so forth. But that being said, a lot of people may have seen the stage play, or they've seen the remake, but never actually seen the original 35 version. It's why we are screening it now. Uh, <laughs> we hope that you will enjoy this screening of the 39 Steps, and I'm just introducing the film, and I'll come in at the very end, uh, because the, the the main point of these tribute weekends is to allow you, the audience, to enjoy these films without me interjecting my commentary all the time. That is a different show. This show is for you to enjoy the films. If I have some type of important information to relay to you, I will come back on, but generally speaking, this is for you to enjoy the films. So, without further ado, we'll get the film started. It is Alfred Hitchcock's The 39 Steps from 1935, and we hope that you enjoy this screening, and uh, we'll continue watching some of the other screenings we have coming on this weekend. So, thank you.
gentlemen, with your kind attention and permission, I have the honor of presenting to you one of the most remarkable men in the world. How remarkable? He's sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> and can you be surprised at that, gentlemen? Every day, he commits to memory 50 new facts and remembers every one of them. Facts from history, from geography, from newspapers, from scientific books, millions and millions of them. Think of the strain involved by his prodigious feet. His feet ain't half as big as yours, Polly. <laughs> I'm referring to his feats of memory. Oh. <laughs> Test him, please. Ladies and gentlemen, ask him your questions, and he will answer you fully and freely. Mr. Memory. <laughs> I also add, ladies and gentlemen, before retiring, that Mr. Memory has left his brain to the British Museum. <laughs> Question, please. Ladies first. Where's my old man been since last Saturday? On the moon. In quark. <laughs> How can he fit? <laughs> A serious question, please. Uh, what won the Derby in 1921? Mr. Jack Jones, humorist for Steve Donoghue, won a length at the odds of six to one. Second and third, Craig and Aaron and Lemonora. Am I right, sir? Right. What won in 1936? You come back in 1937 and I'll tell you, sir. <laughs> How far is Winnipeg from Montreal? What won the cup in 1926? Cup? Waterloo, football or tea, sir? Football, silly. <laughs> it's not to win it. 63 BC in the presence of the Emperor Nero. <laughs> that falls is flipping poultry. Shh, don't make yourself so common. Well, our fellows are funny, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> How many races did Mick the Miller win? <laughs> oh, old is my wet? When was Cripp in hand? <laughs> Who was the last British heavyweight champion of the world? Henry VIII. My old woman. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Fitzsimmons. He defeated Jim Corbett, heavyweight champion of America, at Carson City, Nevada, in October 1897. He was then 34 years of age. Am I right, sir? How old is my wet? I know, sir, but I never tell a lady's age. <laughs> Next, please. Oh, 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 Distance from Montreal, 1,424 miles. Am I right, sir? Quite right. Oh, yeah. Next, oh, yeah. Of course, that was a very historical fact. Idea. Well, I like to. Well, it's your funeral. Come on, then there's a bus. Stay 
stay here always. No, I've taken a furnished flat. I'm only over here from Canada for a few months. By the way, am I allowed to know your name? Smith? All right. Do you want to know more about me? What do you think I do for a living? Actress? Not in the way you mean. Chorus? <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I'm a freelance. Out for adventure, eh? That's right. This way. I'm afraid you'll find my sitting room all upset. I've had the decorators in. Wait till I find the switch. Not yet. Now. Mr. Hannay. Would you be so very kind and turn that mirror with its face to the wall? You'd be happier if there were curtains over those windows. Yes. I'm sorry. Hello, there's the telephone. Just a minute. Mr. Hannah, don't answer the telephone. Why not? Because I think it's for me. Oh. Oh, please don't answer. Just as you say. Won't you sit down? Thanks. Would you please kick that footstool over to me? Did that. I did. Thank you. I owe you an explanation. Well, don't bother about me. I'm nobody. We cannot talk here. All right. Would you think me very troublesome if I ask for something to eat? I've had nothing all day. Sure. You like headache? Yes, please. I suppose your name isn't really Smith. Depends on where I am. You may call me Annabella. Annabella Smith. Clergyman's daughter, I suppose. <gasps> Hello, nervy. Upset with those shots tonight? I fired those shots. You what? Yes, to create a diversion. You see, I had to get away from the theater quickly. There were two men there who wanted to kill me. Really, you should be more careful in choosing your gentleman friends. No, 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 you don't understand. Well, you don't make it very easy for me, do you? Beautiful, mysterious woman pursued by gunmen. Sounds like a spy story. It's exactly what it is. Only I prefer the word agent better. Agent? For what country? For any country that pays me. Now, what is your country? I have no country. Born in the balloon, eh? We'll let that go. Now, I suppose you've come over here to dig up some great big state secret. No, I'm here to save a secret from being dug up. A very important secret for this country. Not because I love England, but because it will pay me better that way. Thank you. To see the very brilliant agent of a certain foreign power is on the point of obtaining a secret vital to your air defense. I tracked two of his men to that music hall, 
Unfortunate as he recognized me. That's why they're after me now. That was too bad. You ever heard of a thing called persecution mania? You don't believe me? Frankly, I don't. Go and look down into the street then. Yes. I hoped I'd shaken them off. Listen, I'm going to tell you something which is not very healthy to know. But now that they have followed me here, you are in it as much as I am. How do you mean? Have you ever heard of the 39 steps? No, what's that, a pub? <sighs> Never mind. But what you were laughing at just now is true. These men will stick at nothing. I'm the only person who can stop them. If they are not stopped, it's only a matter of days, perhaps hours, before the secret is out of the country. Well, why don't you phone the police or something? Because they wouldn't believe me any more than you did. And if they did, how long do you think it would take to get them going? These men act quickly. You don't know how clever their chief is. Clever and ruthless. Who is he? What's his name? He has a dozen names. And he can look like a hundred people. But one thing he cannot disguise. This. Part of his little finger is missing. So if ever you should meet a man with no top joint there, be very careful, my friend. Thanks. I'll make a note of it. Meanwhile, what are you going to do? First, I'll eat my haddock. And then, if you're not going to turn me out into the street, have a good night's rest. Oh, you're welcome to my bed. I'll get a shakedown on the couch. Uh, anything else I can get you? A map of Scotland. Why Scotland? There is a man in Scotland whom I must visit next, if anything is to be done. Are there 39 steps in Scotland by any chance? Perhaps I'll tell you tomorrow. laughing at just now is true. These men will stop at nothing. must visit next if anything is to be done. It is only a matter of days, perhaps hours, before the secret is out of the country. The police would not believe me any more than you did. I tell you, these men act quickly. Quickly. Quickly.
morning, sir. You were out bright and early this morning. Could you use a palm note, brother? What's the catch? I want to borrow your cap and coat. Yeah, wait a minute. What's all this? What's the big idea? I want to make a getaway. Do a bunk? Yes. What have you been up to? I'll have to trust you. There's been a murder committed up on the first floor. By you? No, no. By those two men out there. I see. Now I suppose they're waiting there as good as gold for a copper to come and arrest them. It's quite true. Listen. They're spies, foreigners. They've murdered a woman in my flat and now they're waiting for me. Oh, come off it. Funny jokes at five o'clock in the morning. All right, all right. I'll tell you the truth. You married? Yes, but don't rub it in. What's the idea now? Well, I'm not, you see. I'm a bachelor. Oh, are you? A married woman lives on the first floor. Does she? Yeah, and I've just been paying her a call. And now I want to go home. Well, what's preventing you? Well, one of those men's her brother, the other's her husband. How do you see? Well, why didn't you tell me before, old fella? I only wanted to be told. Trying to keep me with a lot of tales about murders and foreigners. Here, put this yes. on. Put on my little hat. There you are. Take the pound. No, 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 sir. You're welcome to it. You do the same for me one day. Lead the pony round the corner. So long, old sport. Goodbye, thank you. Oi! The empties! Streamline model number one. What I've been talking to you about. Anything go with it? I should say so. This. Put a pretty girl inside those. She needn't be ashamed of herself anywhere. All right. Bring it back to me when it's filled. I will. <laughs> well, what's this? Edinburgh. Waverley. Mm. We're getting on. I hope you'll pardon us for talking business, sir. Oh, certainly. Certainly. Good day, Good day, sir. Good day. Good day. Minded old geezer. I bet he's very good at charades. <laughs> I wonder what won the two o'clock at Windsor. I don't know. It's a bit of paper. Dispatch. Hey, son. Speak it out English. Dispatch. Hello. Well, what won it? There's been another woman murdered in the West End flat. What? Woman murdered in West End flat. Ah, uh, these sex dramas don't appeal to me. You want one? A uh, bachelor bath. Good. Seven to four. Oh, not so good. Fulton Mansions, Fulton Place. By the BBC. That's a nice quiet place to put someone to sleep. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> That's a good one. What was she like? One of the usual? A well-dressed woman of about 35 with a knife in her back. The tenant, Richard Hanney, is missing. You surprise me. <laughs> At seven o'clock this morning, the charwoman Elizabeth Briggs... Well, if that isn't the blasted liver, what's the matter now? Is there no honesty in this world at all? I ask you. The new bodyline rubber panty corset. On sale today. McCutcheon Brothers, Princess Street. Price 17 and 9. Brassier to match, 4 and 11. Do you get that? The bodyline. One and three cheaper than our streamline. No use going to Aberdeen now. Why don't I have a look at your paper? Certainly. Evening, Miss Clark. Evening, Miss Clark. Evening, Miss Clark. 
think. There's enough evidence there to hang any man. What can I do for you, sir? Oh, uh, can you tell me what uh, tra station that train stop at me? Do you think I am a railway porter? Go in and find out for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Better one than that present. Well, you How lovely to see you. Don't mind having a free meal in there. I was desperate. I'm terribly sorry. I had to do it. Look here. My name's Hanny. They're after me. I, I swear I'm innocent. You've got to help me. I've got to keep free for the next few days. Well, you've seen the men pass you in the last few minutes. This is the man you want, I think. When we passed just now. He's way in here and told me his name was Hanny. Is your name Hanny? No. Why are you coming in to tea, sir? By the right along. <laughs> Five foot ten, small moustache. Last seen wearing a dark suit, but he may have obtained a change of clothing.
day. And to you. What will your business be? I'm a motor mechanic. I'm looking for a job. You'll find no work about here. Oh, are there no big houses around here? Only Sir Andrews, and he won't be wanting you. He's had the same chauffeur for 40 years. Oh, I didn't know there'd been cars that long. He was coachman besides when he was our boy. Oh, I see. Oh, what's that? That's the manse. But the minister hasn't got a motor car. Are there no newcomers? Aye, there's an Englishman, a kind of professor. Professor? He lives at Ardna Shellach. Where? Ardna Shellach, on the other side of the loch. Oh, would there be anyone near that village? It would. Thanks. Thanks, I'll try there. You won't try tonight. It's 14 miles. You could get a lift in that van. No. Down the other way. I guess you're right. Uh, could you put me up for the night somehow? Free? No, I'll pay. All right. Can you eat the herring? I can eat half a dozen right now. Can you sleep in a box bed? I can try. Two and six. Take it now. Thank you. Go in with the gentleman. He'll stay with us till tomorrow morning. Your daughter? My wife. Will you no come in? Thank you. Here's your bed. Oh, I'll lift these things. Could you sleep there, do you think? You try and stop me. Oh, you'll be tired. I'll say I am. I'm on the tramp looking for a job. Won't you sit down, please, while I go on with our supper? Oh, thank you. You've been in these parts long? No. I'm from Glasgow. Did you ever see it? No. Oh, you should see Sochi Hall Street with all its fine shops. And Argyle Street on a Saturday night with the trams and the lights and the cinema palaces and the crowds. Oh, it's Saturday night tonight. You certainly don't get those things out here. No. You miss them? Sometimes. Well, I've never been to Glasgow, but I've been to Edinburgh and Montreal and London. I'll tell you all about London at supper. John wouldn't approve of that, I doubt. Why not? He says it's best not to think of such places and all the wickedness that goes on there. Well, why not listen now before he comes back? What do you want to know? Well, is it true that all the ladies paint their toenails? Some of them. Do London ladies look beautiful? They do. But they wouldn't if you were beside them. You ought not to say that. What ought you not to say? I just seen to your wife that I prefer living in town than the country. God made the country. Is the supper ready, woman? Do you mind if I have a look at your paper? No, I don't mind. Thank you. Tell me your name. Oh, Hammond. Well, Mr. Hammond, if you'll pet doing that paper, I'll say a blessing. Yes, of course. Sanctify these bounteous mercies to us miserable sinners. O oh, Lord, make us truly thankful for them and for all thy manifold blessings. And continually turn our hearts from wickedness and from worldly things unto thee. Amen. Oh, mind, I forgot to lock the barn.
There are cars coming. That'll be the police. You best be going. Thank you. I think it's a grand sleep. Hurry up. Don't let them catch you. I'm ready. I'll never forget you for doing this for me. Which way do I go? I'll show you. I... I might have known. Making love behind my back. Get out. Just a minute. I and you two. Get out of my house before I... I go. Go. I'll leave you like this, no fear. It's your chance of liberty. Look here, you don't understand. Look here, you're all wrong about this. You're only trying to help me. Aye, to bring shame and disgrace upon my house. You're telling me to escape from the police. The police? It's the police. They're after me for murder. What? They're here. But you're only trying to warn me. I had to tell her about it last night. Don't let them in. Say I'm not here. I'll make it with you while. How much? Five pounds. Have you got that much? Yes. Give it to me. Well, they've gone. Get back into the bed. Shut them in. Hide them. No, not there. I didn't trust him. But he took the money. He couldn't have resisted. Here. Have you seen a stranger over here? Yeah, I was right. He's asking if there's a reward if you get catched. He'll argy baggy for a moment longer before he lets them in. Now's your time. Oh, your jacket's terrible light coloured. I'm afraid they'll see you. You best take this one. Is this your husband's coat? Aye, his son, the best one. But never mind. They what'll, mustn't see you. What'll happen to you? Oh, I say, I couldn't have stopped you. Well, not he'll treat you. No. He'll pray at me, but no more. What's your name? Margaret. Goodbye, Margaret. I'll never forget you for this. My name. Ask him if he knows Miss Annabella Smith. Would you wait here, sir, while I yes, try? Yes, outside the windows or calling at the house? No, sir. There hasn't been anybody near here for the last half hour. You're from Annabella Smith? Yes. We're just having a few drinks to celebrate my daughter Hillary's birthday. Give me five minutes to get rid of these people, then we can talk. Of Come along in and meet my wife. Louisa, my dear, I have another guest for you. This is Mr... I forgot to ask your name. Emma. Mr. Hammond. He's come to see me on business. All the way from London. There's a police inspector at the door, sir. He wants to speak to you. The door. 
All right. All right. I'll deal with him. Take him in, my dear, will you please? Come and meet my daughter. This is Patricia. Uh, Mrs. Bailey, Mrs. Huntley. Uh, oh, Hilary, my dear. This is Mr. Um, Hammond. Uh, Mr. Hammond. Uh, he's just arrived from London. How do you do, Mr. Hammond? Forgive the orgy. We've all been to church and the sermon lasts for three quarters of an hour. <laughs> but this is Captain and Mrs. Ogilvy. Have a drink, Mr. Hammond. Thank you. This is Derek. Derek Stewart. And this is Sheriff Watson. You've got to be polite to him. He's our sheriff substitute. Scotch for local beef. Give you six months hard as soon as look at you. <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry. I've sent them away. Come and look at the view from this window, Mr. Hammond. We're rather proud of it. By the way, Sheriff, when are you going to catch that murderer? Murderer? What murderer? My dear, haven't you heard? Why, the man that stuck a carving knife into that woman in Portland Place last week. He's here in the district. Darling, how exciting. Well, oh, somewhere about. He's been on the moors, Bridge of Orkey or somewhere. Sheriff Angel, why don't you catch him? You wouldn't like me to be stuck in the back with a carving knife, would you? Oh, it's no business of mine to catch him. You catch him, and I'll convict him. Is there a reward? <laughs> Gracious, it's nearly one o'clock. Jim, we must get out of here. The professor wants his lunch. There's no hurry, my dear. Still, if you must go. That. Uh, ring for Captain Ogilvy's car, will you? Yes, sir. I'll take you with me. Can you have a new car? Yes, sir. Come again another time. Do you want to do? Well, whenever you do catch him, you'll find me at the sheriff's court at ten every morning, so bring him along. Goodbye, sir. Louisa, my dear, if you'll excuse us, Mr. Hammond and I want to have a chat before lunch. Now, Mr. Hanney, I suppose it's safe to call you by your real name now. What about our mutual friend, Annabella? She's been murdered. Murdered? Oh, the Portland Mansions affair. What are our friends outside are looking for you for? I didn't do it. Of course you didn't. But why come all this way to Scotland to tell me about it? I believe she was coming to see you about some air ministry secret. She was killed by a foreign agent who was interested too. Tell you what the foreign agent looked like? It wasn't time. No, there was one thing. Part of his little finger was missing. Which one? This one, I think. Sure it wasn't this one? Lunch is ready, dear. I'm coming right away. Well, Mr. Hanney, I'm afraid I've been guilty of leading you down the garden path. Or should it be up? I never can remember. It seems to be the wrong garden, all right. Well, what are we going to do about it? That's just the point. What are we going to do about it? You see, I live here as a respectable citizen. And you must realize that my whole existence would be jeopardized if it became known that I'm not, uh, what shall we say, not what I seem. Oh, Mr. Hanney, why have you come here? Why have you forced me into this difficult position? I can't lock you up in a room or anything like that. You see, there's my wife and daughters to think of. I don't know what to think. Really, I don't. What makes it doubly important that I shouldn't let you go is that I'm just about to uh, convey some very vital information out of the country. Oh, yes, I've got it. I'm afraid poor Amabella would have been too late in any case. Well, that's that. Yes. And what about it? What about what? About yourself. Seems to me there's only one way out. Mm, what's that? Supposing I left you alone with this revolver, tomorrow's newspapers would be able to announce that the Portland Place murderer had taken his own life. I thought you were coming to lunch directly, dear. We've all been waiting. Mr. Hammond be staying? I don't think so, dear. Well, what do you think, Mr. Hanney?
Well, I'm afraid you leave me no alternative. I can't find my hymn book. Where did you leave it? In the breast pocket of my overcoat. It was hung in here. Oh. Jean, I... I am afraid I gave it to that gentleman who was staying here that night. <laughs> Cigarette cases, yes, but I've never seen it happen to a hymn book before, except on the movies. And this bullet stuck among the hymns, eh? Well, I'm not surprised, Mr. Honey. Some of those hymns are terrible hard to get through. <laughs> I've stuck at them myself before now, <laughs> eh? Uh, I'm not complaining, Sherry. Hymns that have helped me, eh? Yes, that's a good one, Mr. Honey. That's fine. And to think that I was drinking a champagne only half an hour before. Well, it's a lesson to us all, Mr. Honey, not to mix with doubtful company on the Sabbath. And uh, how did you escape? Well, if you look through the window, sir, you'll see. They put the, uh, well, the body in the dressing room. When I came to, I borrowed this suit in case one of his men recognized me and pinched his car. Sheriff, I don't want to hurry you or anything, but Orton would be taking steps. This is serious, you know. If it weren't, you don't suppose I'd put myself in your hands with a murder charge hanging over me? Never heed the murder, Mr. Hanny. I don't doubt you'll be able to convince Scotland Yard of your innocence as easily as you've convinced me. All I'll need will be a short statement that I can forward to the proper authority. Okay. I have someone coming over from the police station next door. Take it down. Thank you, sir. Are you wishing to see me, Sheriff? Indeed I am. Do you think I enjoy playing for time with a murderer? Murderer? Certainly. Annie, you're under arrest on the charge of willful murder of a woman unknown in Portland Mansions, London, on Tuesday last. Take him over to the county jail. Sheriff, if you heard my story, you must be coming. It's true. I tell you every word of it. Annie, we are not so daft in Scotland as some smart Londoners may think. Do you think I believed your cock and bull story about the professor? Why, he's my best friend in the district. Give me Professor Jordan. If the professor didn't shoot me, where did that bullet come from? Oh, that's easy. From one of your pursuers on the moor. Isn't that so, Inspector? It is so, sir. I had a shot at him myself. I yeah. demand that you allow me to telephone to the High Commissioner for Canada in London. You better do that from London. You'll be there soon enough. It'll save you the cost of a trunk call. That's the professor's car, all right. Penny must be inside spilling the beans. Hey, stop him, man! My God! Ladies 
and gentlemen, I apologize for my hesitation in rising just now, but to tell you the simple truth, I'd entirely fail while listening to the chairman's flattering description of the next speaker to realize he was talking about me. me. <laughs> As for you, may I say from the bottom of my heart and with the utmost sincerity how delighted and relieved I am to find myself in your presence at this moment. <laughs> Delighted uh, because of your friendly reception, uh, relieved because so long as I stand on this platform, I'm delivered from the moment from the cares and anxieties which must always be the lot of a man in my position. When I journeyed up to Scotland a few days ago, travelling on the Highland Express over that magnificent structure, the Fourth Bridge, that monument to Scottish engineering and Scottish muscle. <laughs> That is to say, on that journey, I had no idea that in a few days' time I should find myself addressing an important political meeting. No idea. I had planned a very different programme for myself. A very different programme. You'd be for the moors to shoot something. Yes, or somebody. I'm a rotten shot. <laughs> Anyhow, I little thought I should be speaking tonight in support of that, that, that brilliant young statesman, that, that rising, uh, uh, the, the, the gentleman on my right already known among you as one destined to make no uncertain mark in politics. In other words, your future member of parliament, your candidate, Mr. Uh, McCrocodile. Does they know the candidate's name? I know your candidate will forgive my referring to him by the, the friendly nickname by which he's already known in anticipation, uh, in anticipation, mark you, at uh, Westminster. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to discuss some topic. What shall it be? The herring fishery. Unemployment. What about the idle rich? Idle rich? That's a bit of an old-fashioned topic these days, especially for me, because I'm not rich and I've never been idle. <laughs> I've been pretty busy all my life, and I expect to be much busier quite soon. Have you ever worked for your hands? Indeed I have, and I've known what it is to feel lonely and helpless and to have the whole world against me. And those are things that no man or woman ought to feel. And I ask yeah. your candidate and all those who love their fellow men to set themselves resolutely to make this world a happier place to live in. A world where no nation plots against nation, where no neighbor plots against neighbor, where there is no persecution or hunting down, where everybody gets a square deal and a sporting chance, and where people try to help and not to hinder. A world from which suspicion and cruelty and fear have been forever banished. That is the sort of world I want. Is that the sort of world you want? <laughs> as long as I could for you. Well, you're certainly a difficult man to follow. Well, I suppose you think you've been damn clever. Officer, will you tell your prisoner not to insult me, You please? try and stop You me. come along with me. Couldn't you realise I was speaking the truth in that railway carriage? You must have seen I was telling you. Well, whether you believe me or not, will you put a telephone call through to the High Commissioner for Canada in London and tell him an enormously important secret... That'll do now. An enormously important secret is being taken out of this country by a foreign agent. I can't do anything myself because of this fool of a detective. Has that penetrated? Right to the funny bone. Now tell me another one. Haven't you any sense at all? Put that call through, I beg of you, and refer them to me. Will you do this? No. Good night. I beg pardon, miss, but we should like you to come too. Whatever for? To identify the prisoner formally. Will you come to the police station? What? It's only for a few minutes. All right, if it's absolutely necessary, let's get it over. Now you. Must I sit next to this man? It's only for a short time, miss. Well, be as quick as you can. You must have misunderstood me, miss. We're not exactly going to this police station. Well, where are we going? To Inverary, miss. Inverary? Yes, miss. This man's to be questioned by the sheriff principal. We have orders to take him there direct. But you've no orders to take me. 
No, miss, but I'm afraid you must go. I'll see you're sent back at the earliest possible moment. Well, how far is it to Inverary? Forty miles. Will you keep quiet? Sorry. We'll be there in less than two hours, miss. Two hours? Do you think I'm going to spend half the night with you all? Looks like it. going the wrong way. That's the way down to the south. Surely that's the way to Inverary. There's a bridge fallen down on that road, miss. We shall have to go around. The man knows the way. <sighs> Might I see your warrant? You shut your mouth. You'll see it soon enough when we get to the station. Would you like to have a small bet with me, Pamela? All right, I'll have it with you, Sherlock. I'll lay you a hundred to one that your sheriff principal is the top joint of his little finger missing. What about it? I win. Hello, what are we stopping for? Oh, it's a whole flock of detectives. Over the road, damn silly things. Get out, both of you, and clear them away. What about him? I'll soon fix that. There, miss. Now you're a special constable. What's the idea? What are you as doing? As long as you for? stay, he stays. <laughs> yes, and as long as I go, you go. Come on. Stop them. They've got away. Come on, my son. I won't. I won't. I'll get out of you and I'll shoot you first myself after I mean that. There's nobody dumb here, I tell you. Then come up here, blast you, and don't waste any more time. Spread out and find them. Be a mile away by now. Don't do that. Oh, do stop whistling. What are you doing all this for? You can't possibly escape. What chance have you got tied to me? Keep that question for your husband. Meanwhile, I'll admit you're the white man's burden. I know, and I can't tell you what comfort that thought gives me. 
I say, what is the use of all this? Those policemen will get you as soon as it's daylight. They may get me, but they're not policemen. And when did you find that out? You found that out yourself. I should never have known that was the wrong road to Inverary. They were taking us to their boss, and God help either you or me if they ever catch us again. I see. You're still sticking to your penny novel at spy story. <sighs> There are 20 million women in this island, and I've got to be chained to you. Now, look here, listen, once more. I'm telling you the truth. I told it to you once in the train last week. I tried to tell you after the election meeting this evening. I'm telling it to you now for the third time. There's a dangerous conspiracy against this island, and we're the only people who can stop it. Think what you've seen happen right under your very nose. The gallant knight to the rescue. All right. Then I'm just a plain, common murderer who stabbed an innocent, defenceless woman in the back not four days ago. How do you come out over that? I don't know how innocent you may be, but you're a woman and you're defenceless and you're alone on a desolate moor in the dark, manacled to a murderer who'd stop at nothing to get you off his hands. If that's the situation you prefer, have it, my lovely, and welcome. I'm not afraid of... <laughs> For all you know, I may murder a woman a week. So listen to a bit of advice. From now on, do every single thing I tell you to do, and do it quick. Oh, you big bully. I like your pluck. Come on. We're going in there. What for? That's my business. But, uh... Now, remember what I said, the civil tongue, or else... We're going in there, and you're going to back me up in every single thing I say or do. Has that penetrated the ivory dome? Only just. All right, pull yourself together. Now, put your hand in my pocket and look as though you're in a hurry. Come along. Oh, come away in, ma'am. Come away in, sir. Oh, the young lady's terrible. Oh, yes, we had an accident with our car a few miles back. Oh, you'll be staying the night? Yes. We have just the one room left with the one bed in it. You'll no be minding that. Oh, no, 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 quite the reverse. Your man and wife, I suppose. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Have you any luggage? No, we left that behind in the car. Oh, maybe I could lend the young lady a nightgown. Uh, will you please to register? Uh, James, uh, the book. Aye, aye. I'll away up and light the fire for you. Will you be needing your supper? Oh, no, thank you. Just set up a large whisky and soda and a few sandwiches. Oh, and a uh, glass of milk. Oh, very well. I can't write with my left hand, my dear, but I can shoot with it. You can guess what's in this pocket. Come on. Now, you shall sign, darling. The sooner you get used to writing your new name, the better. Now, off we go. Mr. and Mrs. Henry Hopkinson, the Hollyhocks, Hammersmith. I'll be back in a minute, chaps. Oh, Now, dearie, off with that wet skirt of yours, and I'll have it dried in the kitchen. Oh, don't bother, Italy. It'll dry in front of the fire just as well, thanks all the same. No doubt the gentleman will take care of you. Good night, sir. Uh, good night, mother. Good night. Good night. Is he married to her, do you think? I didn't ken and I didn't care. They're so terrible in love with each other. I tell you, I can't stand it any longer. I'm going to tell them the whole story. You want to hang me for a murder I never committed? As long as they hang you, I don't care whether you committed it or not. Let me go! Do you think I'm going to spend the whole night with you in this room? Of course you are. What else can you do? Come on. <laughs> See that. I thought maybe you'd like this in your bed, sir. Oh, thank you very much. You'd like a hot water bottle, wouldn't you, my sweet? Yes, darling. Yes, darling. Very well. I say, please don't go. Why not? Is anything wrong? Of 
course, there's nothing wrong. She wants to tell you something, that's all. We're a runaway couple. I kenned it all the time. And they're after you? You won't give us away, will you? Please. Of course we will not give you up. A good night to you both. You'll no be disturbed. Thank God for a bite to eat. Come along. There you are. Now, what's the next item on the program? Get these things off. Right. How are we going to set about it? Anything in that bag of yours would help? A pair of uh, scissors or hairpin or something? There's a nail file here. Do you think that'd help? Oh, easily. It'll take about ten years, but we can try it. Now, let's make ourselves as comfortable as possible. What about that skirt of yours? Still pretty damp, you know. Yes. Don't want to be tied to a pneumonia case on top of everything else. Take it off, I don't mind. I shall keep it on, thank you. And that is that. My shoes and stockings are so good, I think I'll take them off. It's the first sensible thing I've heard you say. Can I be of any assistance? No, thank you. All right. Here, hold this. Oh, yes. Half a minute. Um, thank you. Don't mention it. Do you like your milk now? Oh, uh, no, thank you. I'll, I'll wait a little. All right. Here you are. That's better. Now, are your feet quite warm again? Yes, thank you. Oh, come on. Now, will you kindly place yourself on the operating table? Mm. All right, all right. Nobody's going to hurt you. This is our mistress day. Let's get some rest while we can. I'm not going to lie on this bed. So long as you're chained to me, you'll lie wherever I lie with us, I'm East Twins. Oh, don't gloat. Gloat? Do you think I'm looking forward to waking up in the morning and seeing your face beside me, unwashed and shiny? What a sight you'll be. Even that nail file, let's have a go at this. Thank you. There I go again. I wish I could get that damn tune out of my head. I wonder where I heard it. You sound very sleepy. Sleepy, I'll say so. Do you know when I last slept in a bed? Saturday night, whenever that was. Then I only got a couple of hours. What made you wake so soon? Dreams? What do you mean, dreams? I've always been told murderers have terrible dreams. Oh, but only at first. Got over that long time ago. When I first took to crime, I was quite squeamish about it. I was a most sensitive child. You surprise me. I used to wake up in the middle of the night screaming, thinking the police were after me, but one gets hardened. How did you start? Oh, quite a small way, like most of us. Pilfering pennies from other children's lockers at school, then a little pocket picking, then a spot of car pinching, and smash and grab, and so on to plain burglary. Killed my first man when I was 19. <sighs> And in years to come, you'll be able to take your grandchildren to Madame Tussauds and point me out. Which section? Oh, it's early to say. I'm still young. But I'll be there all right in one department or another. Yes, you'll point me out and say, Chicks, if I were to tell you how matey I once was with that gentleman in Bishop's Manor. Hmm. You're uh, pinching my wrist with his hand. Oh, sorry. Talking of Madame Tussauds, that's how it all began. What began? My career of crime. All hereditary, great uncle Penruddock. Who was he? My good girl, where were you brought? I've never heard of my great uncle Penruddock, the Cornish bluebeard. Oh. Quite all from him. I thought your family came from Canada. No, that's where they went, after the Penruddock incident. And he murdered three wives and got away with it, but his third mother in law got the goods on him and tried to have him arrested. <laughs> Did she succeed? No. He was too quick for her. Took her for a walk to Land's End and shoved her over into the Atlantic Ocean. He's in Madame Tussauds, all right, and there's no doubt about his department. You must go down and see him sometime. Can't mistake him. Third on the left as you go in, red whiskers and a hair lip. And that lady is the sad story of my life. Poor orphan boy who never had a chance. Are you still set on giving me up to the police?
sure everything's going to be quite all right. Bound to be. He can't have much time. As soon as I picked up... You know what? I'll clear out of the country. Be careful. Wow, to me. Goodbye, my dear. Professor Jordan's house. Can I speak to Mrs. Jordan then? Is that Mrs. Jordan? Oh, he's gone to London already, has he? If you could manage it, I'd like that whiskey hot. Oh, I'll away and get the hot water. No, he dodged down the side street and the police went the wrong way. The girl handed him over to us thinking we would have taken him. We had to take her as well because he told her everything. Very good, ma'am. I see. Yes, ma'am. Well? The old man's got the wind up. He's cleared out already. What over for? Thought it too dangerous with Hanny on the loose. He's warning the whole 39 steps. Has he got the, uh, you know? Yes. He's picking up our friend of the London Palladium on the way out. Uh, yes, yep, Tony. Yes. That'll be half a crown. And the phone call? Oh, we'll see a shilling. Is, uh... Is this a hotel as well? Aye. I mean, do you have people staying here? Aye. I suppose you get a few odd people at this time of the year? Oh, aye. Hmm. You didn't happen to have anyone in tonight, did you? Aye. They, uh, they weren't by any chance a young couple, were they? James! You never seen it. What kind of a silly creature am I married to? Do you want to get us all jailed? How much did you take for these? Half a crown. Oh. Didn't let on to anybody that you got a drink here after hours. Oh. <laughs> you old fool, you, you wouldn't have give away a young couple, would you?
morning. What's the idea? How did we get out of these? We didn't, at least you didn't. I slipped out of mine last night and came and camped out here. Well, why didn't you run away? I did, but just as I was going, I... I discovered that you've been speaking the truth. So I decided to stay. May I ask what earthquake caused your brain to work at last? Those two men were in here last night. I overheard them telephoning. What did they say? Oh, uh, a lot of stuff about... about the 39 steps. The 30, you you what? don't be... No, go on, go on. Uh, and someone's going to warn them. How can you warn steps? Never mind, go on. Oh, yes, yes, and there was another thing. Someone's got scared and is clearing out. And, um... Oh, yes, yes, I know. And, and it's picking up someone at the London Palladium. London Palladium? Is that the professor? Our friend with the little finger missing? What does he want to go there for? I feel such a fool, not having believed you. Oh, that's all right. Um, well, we, 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 we ought to get a move on. What room are those two men in? No room. They, they went as soon as they telephoned. They what? Didn't I tell you? You let them go after hearing what they said. You, you button-headed little idiot. Don't talk to me like that. Four or five precious hours wasted. Why didn't you wake me up at once? Even you might have realized that what they said was important. Well, now they call these men off. Why not let well alone? Let well alone? My good girl, I'm accused of murder. Can't you realize the only way I can clear myself is to expose these spies? You still can. The man's going to the London Palladium. Really? First house or second house? I'll get there five hours late. Fine. The show will just about suit you. What's that? Crazy month. You're quite right, madam. It's true, the Air Ministry has got a new thing quite a lot of people are interested in. But they are positive that no papers are missing about it that will be of any use to a spy. But I tell you, I'm quite certain about it. There's a man leaving the country tonight with something. Since you phoned to us from Scotland this morning, we've made the minutest inquiries. It's obvious I'm wasting my time here. Now, just a moment, miss, please. Uh, there's one thing you haven't told us. Where's Richard Hanney? I haven't the faintest idea. Now, look here, miss, you can't... You're in the telephone book, aren't you? Yes. Well, if anything crops up, we'll give you a ring. That'll be all now. Thank you. Tell Archer and Seagrave to get another taxi and follow that girl. She'll lead us to Hanny, all right. exit and on no account let anyone leave the building. Now you two men go in the office to piss. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall now see. Thank you. 
anything about it. I've been to Scotland Yard. Nothing whatever has been stolen from the air ministry. They're absolutely certain about it. But you had those men say it got in there, yes. Shall we take him by yourself and wait till the end of the night? But what are you going to do? There's nothing missing. There's an end to it. Organization of spies collecting information on behalf of the Foreign Office of. <laughs> Quite all right. The first feature of the new engine is its greatly increased ratio of compression, represented by R minus 1 over R to the power of gamma, where R represents the ratio of compression and gamma. Seen in end elevation, the axis of the two lines of cylinder, angle of 65 degrees. Dimensions of cylinders as follows. This device renders the engine completely silent. Am I right, sir? Quite right, old chair. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm glad it's off my mind. At last. Thank you for joining us for Alfred Hitchcock's The 39 Steps. I hope you've enjoyed that presentation and I uh, hope that uh, if you've seen it once, uh, you have a greater appreciation of it now. Um, this is uh, one of my uh, favorite movies. I, I still have yet to see the stage play, um, <laughs> uh, but uh, one day I'll get around to it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one and you'll join us for uh, the other films that we have playing this weekend. Um, 
Thank you all for joining us uh, at Something Wicked Entertainment's Alfred Hitchcock Tribute Weekend. Don't forget uh, to check out the other videos we are playing this weekend, and eventually they will be available online on our social uh, media sites and all that good stuff. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this uh, screening, and you will join us for some of the other screenings this weekend. Thank you, and have a good day.